Hello friends, welcome to my Princess Diana channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. As if bad luck needs grace to find Netflix, and it seems to be getting even worse with Harry and Meghan chipping in with more deals gone bad. In fact from the statements, and evidence indicated in the body the Harry and Meghan deal with Netflix today has proven to be bad for the streaming giant seeing that they are poor performers. What kind of a deal would lead to these losses? Well, let's find out firstly, what kind of deal was signed in 2020 by Harry and Meghan with Netflix? The couple's agreement with the world-known streaming service amounted to 100 million, these great sums of money invested in a project that gave no returns, how could the profits have been unmet? Plus who thought they would look that ill-prepared for the cameras? The one business that hasn't turned its back on them is Netflix. Maybe the streaming service that rejects them sees potential for groundbreaking content. As of late, some reports even suggest that Netflix is preparing a polo-based series and another for Megan's cooking show. Everything surrounding the couple looks too fake and highly self-curated. Megan, a perpetually recurring character in Us Tabloids, the tabloid itself is filled with example photo ops though it is still generally considered unreliable due to its checkered reputation. Her cookbook is advertised for one in the nearest thrift store, which essentially means they're throwing it in for free. The initial news of the Netflix deal with Harkel was met with heavy skepticism from almost everyone in the industry for the obvious reason. It is well known that neither of them had the lack of experience or expertise needed to lead such an undertaking. The only way this would have worked is if they had given up a lot of control and hired actual talented professionals to do all the work, and due to their prickly and ambitious nature, that seemed highly unlikely. However, it has an air of doomed from the start, and a good few industry insiders, several of whom I'm friends with, were already predicting it. I should point out that they did hire actual very good people to direct this docuseries. The first one didn't work out, and she was already the second director. Well, Liz Garbus even let Harry Potter pictures into the mockumentary and allowed the offensive editing of the late Queen's speech, plus many countless lies, omissions, etc. hardly befitting actions for a documentary producer. Also, in production is the polo documentary with Millis Balak, who worked in the third season of Welcome to Wrexham with Ryan and Rob. And not for the lack of great talented guys but lack of inspiration and ethic to work. But really, all that gets me thinking is that Netflix is doing all of the legwork while the dumber and dumb just kinda bumble along. I mean, tripping over their own feet, to some extent, making everyone's lives a living hell. Well, if they had to literally just sit in front of the camera and call it a day, then I wouldn't mind but if they are meddling at every stage from filming to editing, and whatever happened to time is money? And now four years later, they are doing stuff for Netflix, which they barely delivered half of. And when they do, it's not like they compete a project in a year or two. The contract might not have an early out clause but it's pay as you go, except for the first two to three years where that money is pulled from the back end. I'd say they're listed as producers in order to draw a monthly salary throughout the production, but again that'll come out of the back end. They totally destroyed a ton of value. Burnt all their bridges. Got an indication they are as valueless as product makers. Both of what I read and what those who know something made it clear, the $100 million Amazon payout was a possible gross, it doesn't embrace projected costs for production and payroll among other projected costs. The final payout to the pair was probably a fractional percentage of this, but it was still several times what they deserved. The Harry and Meghan docudrama has surprisingly received a positive review. Despite the fact that I was only offered little 40-second excerpts, inside those little 40 seconds, those were abysmalages. Wow. That sounds boring, even though it was the most viewed documentary as corrected for my misspelling, Amazon, how much profit did they really make on Netflix, though? 
I guess that's a bit like spare with the made-up stats. And what are the precisely the standing issues with the production of their projects? Every one of them is past due every single time because they micromanage, stonewall, metal, or oppose. If Sony thinks they can get something done on time now and the equivalent cost. Actually, if they believe they can do so, or that other film company imagine they can do so, I think I'll just sit here laughing. Well, unless they've been going to the gym with some muscle growth than they are counting on, they'll have the same issue we've seen with every other professional water carrier. I wonder how they will face that. Maybe done like that live to lead thing with little to no Harkle involvement, and they have to cut him in post. It's the only approach you can finish something with those two. Also, I doubted what Megan's returning cooking show was. It's only that Megan's label, American Riviera Orchard, just put out jam. I don't wonder is because the cooking show will be similarly jam-packed. That I can tell. Strawberries, obviously, going to be jams and much many lemons. Oh, and a bronzer. Too much jewelry. And dangling tentacles of hair and fingers to play with it. What about Harry's polo video? I did watch that video, and all I saw was the fact that the horses there should be saved from Harry. The horse looked like it should be begged for mercy. And the horse has paused there, and he slid off the horse's back and rid away from it and dispatched off Harry. I cannot believe that people borrow their horses to Harry. I believe that Nacho is the one that borrows him the ponies. And the only thing Harry does is scare those people, that do not even mind polo, for the horses. I had also heard a couple of native stories from those who had been growing around the house park that Harry was kind of lambently hard on the horse. William is titled a lessee player because he does not ride the ponies hard enough, and Charles was too much of a banana, in his prime. People did not like how Harry was riding, especially because of his spasms. These are people who regard their fondness of horses in the first place. Then Labradors, and the family goes somewhere after. On this one, Harry was spared various individualities that he should not have possessed, thanks to his father, not only the royal one, on that the contradiction or his supposed horsemanship. This little circle, selective established, was now torn inside the quite Bozeman cognitive dissonance. And, frankly, King Daddy would fix it up anyway. The high society circles known as the Charles Bunch are creating a marathon of how the incapable younger son screw up. An exception is, of course, the king himself, who was a top polo player before his injury, and William is very good. It is well known that Harry is a poor player and writer. He only played because he was a prince by blood. Harry has lost a huge, invisible net of protections that used to stop him from multiple sources. He occupied an absolutely tiny but entirely elite square that connected him to various areas of the establishment. Thus, I guess the question here is if any of the above have some truths and I also moved away etc. It's so general, it could have just been a gripe. I really don't know. You know how tight communities are. And that invisible shield collapses. How much longer will others let him use their ponies? Nacho features in the recent polo thing for his benefit, and he learned the horses for Harry to be on its polo club for one short season. He never did it again, because he will be on the text soon when he sees the way Harry treats his horse, actually product. And back to the primary deal with Netflix, and the supposed couple Harry and Meghan. I guess the $100 million initial contract had been blown up. No one pays $100 million to two people with absolutely no track recorded making things. Second-hand Cohn had claimed that their real contract had been only a ridiculous percentage part of the sum. So here is something helpful to Netflix if they are going to throw some cash at the thought outdated out of manufacture output costs. And I mean if they get to summer 2024 without anything tangible, then the road will likely be clear to Netflix demanding an easy contract termination due to lack of deliverable content. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, 
please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy. I'll see you in the next one.